Hey guys, Mike Roberts, the Converse Cowboy Podcast. Sat down today with Kara Brewer, uh, coming to you from the Hidden Valley Ranch here in Louisiana. And um, it's a little bit different show than we typically do. You know, we're, with COVID-19 going on, we're not able to go on the road like we, we normally would, but um, it's all good. And we had a really cool conversation with Kara today. She's uh, over, you know, won over a million dollars in the NCHA, Youth Hall of Fame. Um, she won the Super Stakes in 04 on Play and Tag three-time futurity finalist uh, and multiple age events finalist. I mean, she's she's done a number of things, and, and um, being a female in a mostly male-driven sport, I think that's very commendable. So we, we tackle, you know, what's going on in, in the NCHA today with COVID-19 and, um, you know, how they're somewhat trapped at home just training horses. So tap into some of that, some family stuff, some mindset, and um, just a really cool conversation. You know, check it out. We'll dive into it. Um, you know, I think that what's on every on the forefront of everybody's mind right now is the COVID nineteen. You know, it's kind of altered everybody's plans, and you know, from a show standpoint to a training standpoint, how are you guys pivoting and and you know adapting to the situation? It's it's pretty much the same same thing every day now. You know, you just get up and and you 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 get to spend a lot more time with your three year olds and your and your two year olds, and we're kind of in limbo on the on the show horses because we don't we don't really know when when we get to come back, but but thankfully I I feel lucky that we get to you know still work outside every day. <laughs> if I had to stay inside every day all day for weeks, I would I would go crazy. Right, it's a very optimistic way and, to look at it. Yeah, and and you know, where I live, there's not a there's not a whole, you know, huge amount of people. Mm-hmm. So we are like social distancing anyway. Yeah, that's I was talking to a buddy of mine before we started this, and I, he was like, "Yeah, you live on a, a ranch, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, I quarantine anyway, like by choice." Yeah. <laughs> so it's this not, is nothing new for we're me. We're all getting we're all getting the hang of this whole social distancing. The the worst part about it is. You know the sh- the shows and you know going to Mexican restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> what about that though? I mean, what what are there any talks about what they're going to do for those those show ponies? I mean, that you're trying to get money on, money earned on. I don't I don't know what what they're going to do. Like uh, the year that they had to cancel the bi, they put you know that four year old money the, that following year in the in the five year old class and had like a special class for it. I see. Uh, as for the super stakes, I don't, I don't know what, what they're going to do. And it, it is really hard to, you know, to, to prepare and, and to have a bunch of really good horses and, and not be able to go. Yeah. Right. What about customers that you guys have? I mean, I'm sure they're empathetic to the situation, but is, has that impacted you guys at all? Uh, not, not so much on mine. They, they, you know, they're in the same, they're like, I can't, you know, they want to go, but, but they know that they can't. I think it's just, everybody's pretty sympathetic and, and doesn't want to get sick and doesn't want to spread it. And, and obviously we all want to go, right? but we have got to spend some really good quality time. And this year, I'm sure at the small fraternities and the fraternities, there are going to be some extremely trained up horses. <laughs> That's a very and, good point. They'll either be extremely trained or, or they'll be sick of it. <laughs> Gary, yeah. Gary Belafonte, he, a couple years ago, he, uh, he marked it 18 or 19 or 20 on, on a horse in the first go. And, and the story was that he had gotten the horse like in February, March of its three-year-old year and was barely like halter broke. Like, mm. And he said, can you imagine if I had this horse for two years? It would be like a 10-year-old youth horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Speaking yeah. of Gary, what, what were your thoughts on uh, the futurity this past year with him winning it? It, it was awesome. It was, ab- it was absolutely awesome. He, he is, you know, I, I think that we're starting to get back to the cow horses. You know, they used to be cow horses, and then they got a little bit more uh, 
mechanical and a little bit more patterned. And I, and I still think that there's a very fine line there that we all need to have a little bit of pattern and, and, and more rogue, but, but I think they're starting to integrate more back to the, the cow horses and with the cattle, you know, you hear it all the time. Well, the cows aren't very good. The cows aren't very good. Well, they're, they're okay. If, if your horse is trying to help and can read the cattle with you. Right. But, or at least it helps. Yeah. So I do think, you know, and, and this year at the fraternity, that was probably the best fraternity I've ever seen. The cattle was, they were great. The horses were great. The trainers were great. And, and the judges, you know, they, they weren't afraid to, to jump up and, and mark some scores. You know, even if you had a little bit of a bobble, they would they would pay you back if you came back and just had a scorch and run. Mm-hmm. And it, it made for a great, great finals, great fraternity. Yeah. What did I see? I, I, in doing my homework, um, I have it written down somewhere. How did you do this this past, uh, in this last futurity? Uh, I made Top the 20, semis right? on, yeah, I made the semis on, on both Colts, and, and, which was pretty cool because they were um, homegrown. Um, they were they were full brothers of Hashtag, so they were both metallic cat studs and uh, at a dual ray tag, and, and then went on and made the finals on, on tagline um and, and and it was a pretty it was a pretty cool deal i you know for two years we well for a lot longer than that we, we've been really excited about about these colts because we we like writing the the colts out of our our mares anyway oh yeah but for, for sure. two years i've i've kind of heard well you know full brothers and sisters they don't usually do well they don't usually do well <laughs> why do people and say I that do, you think i don't i don't know i mean of course not you know it's like your kids they're they're going to be different right that doesn't mean they don't have their own strengths and weaknesses yeah and and these two were, were different from each other and different from hashtags but they they both have their own strengths and uh and and they were just good horses no matter no matter who who they were related to right uh, but it was, it was fulfilling. Like I had, had a guy, uh, a cow horse trainer come up and they were talking about buying horses. And I said, well, do you not stay for the yearling sales? And he's like, oh, you know, those, those full siblings never do good. And, <laughs> and it's hard for my customers to pay for, for, you know, something and it, that you don't know. And, and then he said, well, he said, he said, what are you showing? I was like, Oh, two full brothers to hashtag. And he's like, Oh, <laughs> now, did you guys, then, did you guys breed hashtags? Yes. Yeah. Jim, Jim Hayworth is been a customer of my husband's who, who trained for a long time and now ranches. And now, um, I trained for him and, you know, um, kind of in charge of his breeding program. Um, you know, we, we live on his ranch and we have our own ranch just a few miles away. But, um, so we're in charge of, you know, pulling them out and, you know, all the way from halter breaking until training. And, and he, as a yearling, we put him in the, in the yearling sale and, and, uh, Tatum's people bought him as a yearling and it, it was it was great. Can I ask what he brought you at know, that sale? Uh, I think it was either eighty-two or eighty-six thousand because we we had a pretty big reserve on him, uh-huh. and uh, because we we you know we loved him and, but it's still it's still a business for us. Yeah, I was so, going to ask how hard was that for you to make that decision to to sell him. It was hard, but, <laughs> but, he, but I'd also had, um, I had a few at home, like Metallic Mary, who I ended up making the fraternity finals on and Tatum made the finals on hashtags. And, you know, they're, they're both out of our mares. Uh, Mary's at a plague and star who I own. And then, and then hashtags is at a dual ray tag. And so, you know, it just, it it was great to have those those homegrown babies, you know, in the in the finals. Oh, I bet, I bet. I've got to ask though: Is there any regret now seeing what he's done and won the world and 
what does he have? Over four hundred something thousand one now. Is is there any regret in selling him? I don't. I don't think there's regret in selling him. Of course, you know I would have loved to have him, but you know, everything happens for a reason. Yep. And and I I I believe in that. And you know Tatum did a great job, and and you know the hashtag ventures have done a great job promoting him. And you know we bred to him, and we have you know full siblings coming on. We have the two the two four year old studs now, which that I am sad about the the COVID nineteen like like. I'm ready to go show and we're just kind of sitting here in limbo. Yeah. But you know, you know, we've got, uh, there's, there's three two year old full siblings. There was not a three year old that the recent mayor had, had slept that colt that year. So there's, there's three and, and you know, it's exciting, you know, to see, to see the, what's coming up the pipeline. You know, there's, there's a rebel yearling and there's, you know, two metallic yearlings, and then we've got two black highbrow cat fillies out of her this year, um, and a I think a rebel and a metallic coming. So it's it's just you know it, it's just kind of fun seeing up you know what's what's coming up the pipeline. Yeah, right. It seems like you have a barn full of talent. How many do you guys have? How many do you keep in training? Uh, there is probably about thirty five or forty head up here. Oh wow! Which is is plenty for for me because um you know i still have you know a, a kid yeah right <laughs> a seven a seven-year-old boy that you know he takes up a lot of time so if it got too too big i wouldn't be able to enjoy him and and you know be a mom yeah which it's still that's still the number one priority yeah i'm curious to know how so you just have one son right so yes. how- and he is the best thing ever, but like, I don't know how people do more than one kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's got, awesome. You got sounds like you have about thirty six kids though, right? I mean, with all the stuff Pretty you much. have in the barn, how do you keep? Yeah. How do you balance all that though, Kara? The family, the business, the horses. I have I have a lot of help. Uh, I have a wonderful husband, and my parents help. Uh, we homeschool, we homeschool brand, and uh, my mom helps me homeschool. And you know, our customers are are more like family. I got you. Uh, and it it's been it's been great. I'll I'll kind of like say a joke like, I kind of need a wife. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, so yeah, I wish That's you had great. a wife too, so I could have mine back. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. It, yeah. <laughs> um, so you've been doing this for a long time since you were, when did you start? How old were you? I, uh, I was six when my, when my parents got married, Tim adopted me. Um, and he, my mom had, had shown cutting you know, just had one horse and she had a full-time job and she was a single mom and, and she traveled with her job. And then, uh, we moved to Rockford, Illinois and Tim was putting on cuttings and that's how they met. And he was an avid cutter and showed a lot. And he, he's been in the Noah pro hall of fame. And, and when they got married, I started showing and it like, you know, horses, horses have been my life since, since then. So, and, and since I was a little girl, it's, you know, all I wanted to do. So is, is your little one following in mama's footsteps? Has he already started showing some? Oh yeah. yeah. He, he shows and, and he, he's, uh, I don't, I don't force it on him. Um, uh, so, you know, there's spurts where he'll come out every day and then there's spurts that, you know, he, he, you know, he may want to you know, go fishing or go play in the creek or, 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 you know, be a little boy. Um, so, but yes, he, he does. And he's got ponies that he, he trains and, and, and he likes the, the baby colt, <laughs> which my parents are like, you're, you're getting a little dose of what we have because he's like, we're not selling this one. 
And I'm like, uh, we have to. And he's like, no, we're not. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So Youth Hall of Fame, you go on, you you um, you show up at the 2004 Super Stakes with – walk me through that um, – you had you were you were shown as a non pro and then you were, you had a what is it a permit? Yes, so that was when they had the apprenticeship program and, and you could have a permit for a year and that that was in oh three and and at the time when I turned twenty one and CHA would not you know, you couldn't share your family's horses at that time. Um so my my parents were like, Well, we'll share with you, but you're you know, we're not gonna just give you our horses, you know, you can show them the open and we'll help support you. And, and, you know, and they had a big, um, feed lot up there. So in, in Northern Illinois, so, so it was easy for cattle and we had the place and, and they supported me when I, when I turned my court card in, which, you know, a lot of people were like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then, and then there was some people, like, I remember when I, when I turned it in, Paul Hansen was like, so you're going to be a trainer, huh? And I was like, well, yes, sir. (laughs) He's like, good. He's like, we need more women trainers. And so, you know, that kind of stuck with me. And and there there was, there was people that were very supportive. And and then there was people who were like, don't do it. Why do you think they said don't do it? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hard life, uh-huh. you know, uh, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of heart, heartbreak and, and not just with horses, but you know, you have to, you know, the owners, you know, things happen with owners and things happen with horses and horses get hurt and, you know, the economy goes up and down and, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not a nine to five job ever. If you're going to be successful, it's, it's 24 hours. Like you, you know, you, you go to sleep thinking about it. You wait, you wake up thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So in 04, I had given up my card and, uh, we, we showed play and tag. My mom and I showed, she showed her in the non pro and I showed her in the open. She had made the finals, um, in, in the non pro and she was actually in the, the bunch before me. Cause they used to have the non-pro finals first and then the open finals. And, uh, you know, I just remember like she showed and then the next bunch was, was, was me. And we went up and we were watching cattle and, and I was midway through that first bunch. And, um, there had been, a, a 19 and then, Two twenty twos, a cat issue market twenty two, and um, and then um, was Russ Westfall marked a, uh, another twenty two on one of his Jeep geldings that you know they were they were great horses and great runs, and I was walking down there and I was like, now what? Like what is going to happen? <laughs> what is going through your mind at that point? I mean, while you're either warming up or sitting in the stands, whatever you were doing, what's going through your mind? How are you, how are you trying to prepare for that? Well, I, I don't think I was, and I don't <laughs> think I knew, I think, I don't think I knew the difference. Cause I remember watching, watching, I was like, Holy moly, this is going to be a great cutting. And I'm like, and then walking down there, I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's already two twenty twos. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess I'm just going to, you know, go do the best we can. And, we cut three extremely tough cows and that mare was extremely smart and she had a huge heart and, uh, you know, the crowd loved her. So it, it just kind of, you know, fell into place that night. Yeah. I think, I don't know how many times I've watched that run, Kara, you know, when I was, you go through that, that catalog that looks like an encyclopedia, the, at the futurity sales, you know, um, through, oh, yeah. coming through there. And then of course that, the, the cult that I have, you know, by highbrow cat out of play and tag, um, I was, you start to do the research and you're looking at things up and I, I'm at least a hundred times I watched that run, <laughs> you know, my like, God, there's something about that mare, you know, but yeah, um, they, they loved her and she was, she was just a little Mustang looking thing. And, and she just had a big heart, you know, like my, my whole family showed her 
you know, um, my mom made the finals of the fraternity honor. Uh, I made the finals at Augusta. My mom made the finals at Memphis. And like we, we would show her the weekends too. And she just, she just had a big heart. And then my brother and my dad ended up showing her, you know, later down the road too. Um, Did you start they, her, Kara? As a two-year-old? Uh, no, I was still a non-pro, and, and Randy Olson raised her, and he lived, he was a family friend and, and one of my first customers, so when I turned my card in, he, he sent um, her, and then there was a pepto mare out of her mother, and then a, a cat stud, and um, I ended up showing the cat stud at the fraternity that first year and made the semis, and, and that gray mare, and... Um, he just he he started her. He had a he had a man there that that worked for him. Started her, and then when I turned my card in, he he sent her on. And I I still remember the first time I rode her though. So you know, there's some horses that just stick with you, stick with you forever. Yeah, do you also own her today? No, uh, Mike and Julie Magnus own her now in in South Texas, and they they raised your your gray stud colt and mm-hmm. mares. Super nice, and you know they. They talk. We talk all the time, like at shows. And how's my gray mare? She's like, she's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and you know, and and so since the COVID nineteen, you know, there's no shows. So Barwicks have have, you know, sponsored the Cutting Horse Central, and they've got all these, you know, all the old shows, all the old reruns to watch, and all the finals and semis and. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so we've been watching those. And, and, you know, cutting has evolved so much in the past 15 years. Yeah, I wanted that, to ask you about that. From And what has been the biggest difference? I mean, what have you seen that's evolved the most? Oh, uh, you know what? You know, our breeding programs have, have gotten, you know, so spectacular. And, and the there's there's always been great trainers. But now there's just more of them. You know, I don't like it when, when people, you know, don't respect, you know, the, the trainers that, that were, that started it. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, styles have changed, but there's also, you know, our breeding programs have changed and, you know, the cattle have changed and our, and our vet, you know, you know, they didn't used to inject hawks and, and things like that. And, and, you know, it's just gotten so much more specific, but I do think that a lot of things that they have, those horses have passed on, like tag, uh, like her heart and her try and her cowiness. Like I, I think that even though that the styles have changed, all of those have, have passed on to her babies and, and, and you can see it in hashtags, you know, and the crowd loved him and it's, it was the same thing. You know, she's, passed that on to Dol Tag and she passed it on to on to hashtags and they're so cali and smart and they've got big hearts and they just keep on going you know tatum showed him at the you know the aged events and the weekend shows and and i've heard him say it before you know he you know you would think that he he would get tired and he just got better and better and better yeah yeah speaking of 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 tag what um do you have any three-year-olds that you're super excited about this year? I don't have, I don't have any out of dual ray tag this year. Uh, that was the year that the the recent mare sloughed her baby. Hmm. But I have another play gun mare that play gun star who was the mother to metallic Mary, and uh, I've got a once a blue boon out of her that I like. I like a lot. Um, but, and that's the good thing about, you know, Jim and I, we've, and, and I have another customer, John McGraw, that we've got, um, these mares that we just, we really enjoy riding the babies out of. And so if something, you know, misses one year, if we sell, we've got these other mares and, and, you know, play against our, the mother to metallic Mary and metallic rabbit and stars and cats. And, and we've integrated those, you know, their babies into the, into the, breeding programs so it's it's kind of fun that we're starting to you know those babies are hitting the ground 
Yeah. That's interesting. I, um, the breeding interests me so much and, and I get cross-eyed looking at some of that stuff. When you start looking at papers, you know, um, it's almost like you have to be like a care brewer and have done this your entire life to be good at it. You know, what do you say to those people that may be thinking about going down that road and, and, and thinking about breeding performance horses? Uh, you know, so, you know, a lot of people that get into the breeding, you know, they want 10 mares. Well, instead of, you know, getting 10, you know, average mares, they should get two really good mares and, 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 you know, put your money into that. And it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's just what you, you know, prefer. Like I, I love the play gun mares, like between play and tag and, and play gun star. Um, those two mares have been extremely good to me and, 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 and their babies have, have, you know, they've passed on like star, star, her babies are very sensitive. Like they, they want to please and they want to, you know, they want to help and they want to cut. And, and I've, you know, had a lot of success with that. And then, and then tag, you know, they're real gritty and, and cowy. And so I guess it's just finding you know, what, what you like. Quantity over quality, right? Yes. Quality over quantity. Did I say that right? right. Did I say quality? Okay. (laughs) Well, that's what I Quantity over quality. (laughs) Quality, yeah. What was it? um, Dick Peeper, I just got off the phone with him right before I got got on here with you. um, And he said to say hello, by the way. Um, What was it about Play Gun? Brenda, uh, like my whole life. You know, and, and that was another thing, like I would, um, like on, on Brenda's stud, like the PG heavily armed, I would breed a lot of mares and, and I would breed back the play gun in an instant, but most of mine are related. Right. <laughs> right. So, so I do have, um, I have a metallic cat mare that I bred to PG heavily armed because when, when James showed him the like key, you know, he was so smart and so strong and he wasn't he wasn't a very big horse either, but you know, they're, they're so smart and they know exactly where to place their feet and, and how to control that cow. And, and they're just electric. And, and I loved him. So I, I bred, I bred her to him and it, it's pretty cute little filly. <laughs> um, Which my son said, I can't sell. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> the boss, El Jefe. <laughs> What uh, I don't know if you heard me. I think the phone may have broke up. Um, I was saying that Dick. I, I spoke with Dick Peeper right before I got on here with you. He said to say hello, and uh, my my question was, what was it about oh. what was it about Play Gun that drew you guys to to like playing tag and other stuff that that was by Play Gun? He oh, he you know he was so electrifying and he would crouch and he was beautiful and 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 was quick and stop great and we you know that I, and i'm sure that's where tag and and hashtags you know they got it from you know he just the people the crowd loved him like he he was just he was beautiful and and smart and cowy and 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 i i'm sure that he got a lot from playboy but from from his mother miss silver pistol she was she was she would crouch and had loads of cow like it just it's it's cool to see that you know she passed on to him and what he's passed on to others yeah um that's that's interesting dick said uh if you were to open if you were to cut play guns head open it would just be a bunch of little cows running around (laughs) (laughs) yeah he he was so cowy (laughs) yeah some horses you just you just don't forget and he's one of them yeah, I think you I, know, and and I don't. Have you seen the the Augusta run when Jody showed him? I did. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's crouching. He was he was pretty cool. Yeah, they said. I think it was in his promo video. Jody talks about it where he says, even if he didn't win, there was something that he was going to do in that show pen to catch your attention. Oh yeah, the crowd loved him. Yeah. 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 So. Um, you are the first female that we've had on the show, 
and um, I was sitting there making my list out, you know, of all the people we were trying to get on, and I was I had like 50 names, and I'm like, Steve-O, I don't have any females, man. Like, there's a problem with this. We need, I need some females because there's a lot of girls doing a lot of good things out there. Um, so thank you for, for coming on and helping us break that trend. But, um, yeah. what, uh, what advice do you have for those young women out there? You know, like the 22 year old Kara Brewer that may be wanting to go down that road. Um, what do you say to those girls? My, my suggestion is to find, find somebody or find a group that, you know, you, you like it and, and that will support you. And, and just, you know, stick, stick with those people that, that are going to, you know, give you a chance because there, there are a lot and it's gotten a lot more open-minded and I can't imagine what like Lindy and, and Kathy and, and went through when, you know, when they were first starting, I'm sure that it was a, a lot more closed minded and, and I've talked to Lindy and she's, she's been very, very supportive. Um, I'm, I'm sure they had to bust through, through, you know, doors that, that nobody wanted them to come through. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's a, it's a tough life, but it's, it's a great life. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's tough for men too. It's not just women. It's, it's mentally tough of, you know, doing good and then, you know, not doing good and then doing good and, and, you know, horses getting hurt or, you know, not being able to go something there there's always something but you know the the people that are tough and, and love and crave it you know they'll they will succeed right and it almost it is your lifestyle right it's just not something you do it, it becomes part of who you are right yes and and there's been a lot of people that have given me great advice and and great friends and you know you, you just appreciate you know, you appreciate them very much. Yeah. Can you name a couple of those folks that have, that, that have uh, helped you along the way? When, when I was starting out, cause there, there's been a lot like Boyd Rice and, and Craig Morris and, and my, my husband and my parents, um, you know, they, they, I couldn't have done anything without them. And then, you know, you, you go through a lot of people and a lot of help and, and there's people, I say there's people that you go to, you know, for a pat on the back or there's people that you go to, you know, when you want the hard truth. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, some people will do both, but now like Tommy Marvin has helped me for a long time. And, you know, Casey Green and James Payne helped me for a long time and, and Sean Flynn and Austin and, you know, and they, they all have great advice. And, you know, you, you kind of, you, you get in that mode where you just want to get better and get better and get better. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of lose yourself right there. And like Casey's like, just go trust your training. Like you've got this. And James said the same thing a couple of years ago. He's like, you, you know, you want to pick apart everybody's brains and want to try new things and, and it's good, but you don't want to lose you know, your own individuality and your own style. And, and that, you know, that's important. And, and you don't want to forget, you know, the main thing is go hold a cow. Like, don't, right. don't try to be, and my husband's like, you try to make them too perfect. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's won the, you know, Memphis fraternity and made multiple fraternity finals. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> And that he gets so mad at me because he's like, I tell you the same thing all the time. Like, he's like, why does Matt Gaines tell you something? And, and you're like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> I told you the same thing last week. And I'm like, well, maybe it's the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. And, and again, I'm by no means at, at an open level, non-pro level. I'm very amateur, but I you know, I played collegiate baseball and I'm in, you know, real estate. And so I'm a very competitive person. And I think sometimes I forget, it's like, man, just have fun. You know, like we put all this pressure on ourselves to do good, to be our best. And 
I think I worry, you know, may worry about the outcome too much versus just the process of why I enjoy doing what I do. Yeah. And, and it, and I enjoy, I do, I enjoy the process. Like actually one of the, I, I miss, I miss the shows, but one of the aspects of the shows that I miss is, you know, we start taking our three-year-olds now, you know, to town because, you know, you train them at home first and then you have to train them, you know, away from home, you know, so they get used to the crowds and lights and pavement Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, distractions. And I miss that part a lot because that's, you know, that's one of my favorite times of the year is when we start, start taking our Colts in town and, 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 and seeing how they develop because, you know, some horses, you know, you know, will be okay at home. And then you start taking them, taking them to town. And it's like, you give them a purpose, like they, the light comes on and it, and it, it just, you know, as they develop, that that's one of the things I am missing right now. Yeah. That's interesting. And, um, that kind of segues into what I want to want to want to ask you next is we, you mentioned like the purpose for those horses. I'm I'm always curious to know from people what is your why? Like why do you do what you do? What is your purpose? You know because NCHA it's long days. It's hard on your body. It's expensive to do. What is your what is your why, Kara? Why do you get up and do what you do every day? Uh, I I love the horses too. I, I, I do it for the horses. I've always done it for the horses. And I, it, it, and we're all very competitive. Like, you know, like we, we want to win. We want to strive to do the best we can and, and, you know, to get better and, you know, the next show and then, and the next, you know, there's a saying that, you know, why do trainers never commit suicide? Because they always have a good two year old in the barn. <laughs> that's good you know like there's always like the you know the next show the next year like you know just the possibilities so i mean that that's why i do it i i love the and i really um you know a lot of the people i love too right just outside looking in it it seems like the the ncha is has a a very strong family very strong tribe even though you may be competing against each other you guys seem like you are one big tribe oh extremely you know and and the the you know the best class is the youth class because in now and a lot of you know these kids are starting to show in it and and get pretty competitive and you know i grew up in it so yeah it was just you know it was the youth class but like when you have kids and like your friends have kids and and you know they're growing up in it and you can see that you know they're starting to have friends and and it's great that they go and and cheer for each other and even if they're you know they're six seven eight you know years old like it, it's just it's it's the best class of you know of, of the whole of the whole day yeah and you know during the the summer spectacular at the youth scholarship and then and then you know at the bi jan Sego puts on um you know the it's like a little kids cutting it i think it's for 12 and under and it's huge and it's a highlight for those kids and and it's a sport that they can do their whole life yeah, you know yeah, yeah a lot of them have baseball or basketball or golf in, in golf you can do your whole life but you know a lot of them you know after college if they're lucky they go on to college and then if they're extremely lucky they they go on professionally but but cutting is something you can do you can do forever yeah that's a very good point do you, do you ever think about it do you see a day where you and your son may be competing against each other i really wish that he would go on to be like a lawyer or a doctor <laughs> well, he, he can do that it, oh, it's, well like you said he can do that and still show right yeah i would be fine with that or you know i have no idea what he's gonna do <laughs> 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 he, uh, he's he's something else what is it right now is it a fireman or, or is it um superhero what does he does he ever talk about it what he wants to be when he grows up he actually the other day he he said well i want to be in the army 
And I was like, I do not want to discourage this. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not the best time for this. I'm like, that is great. That is a very good idea. <laughs> you got about 10, 11 years to talk him out of that or let him right. change his mind. Right. And it doesn't help that, you know, like we watch, you know, like seals or, you know, stuff on TV. Yeah. Where, and it's very commendable and, and like we, absolutely appreciate all of our servicemen and women but i'm sure you know when you're a mom you don't really want your like it's just a little scary right now for you to think about your kid doing that yeah for sure i don't think any mom wants their son to get shot at in any any way you know so no not not top 10 i get it (laughs) (laughs) i get it um i want to get into some lighter questions um just about some stuff that you're doing, um, stuff you use like saddles. What 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 saddles are you riding? Um, I I use coats and you know for for a long time. And there's you know a lot of great saddles out there. You know, um, I've just had the this coats. She's I still have the the coats that you know we we showed playing tagging, and that was forever ago. Wow. Um, well. <laughs> they they the older coats they just seem to last a long time there's a lot of great great saddles you know kenny kearns makes great saddles the um jns saddles are great um they just it just depends on on you know what what fits you and yeah. what you like yeah what about um what about bits what are you riding for your show ponies you know that you know that just depends on on the horse really and and it's it's kind of funny because you know my husband he is older than me and he grew up like with Gary well not grew up with Gary but learning from Gary Belafonte and and Buster and you know they were hackamores and and Buster Welsh bits and C bits and and he always says, you know, like those little peppy horses, they don't like those squiggly bits. I'm like, it's <laughs> fine. Like it's a snaffle. It's a crucial. They'll be fine. And then <clears throat> like, you know, some horses will not they you know, ones that work really great normally. And and especially you know, like now that we're getting a little bit more little peppy in there with once a blue boon and, and the Pepto and 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 uh so the other day I put on you know, I think a sea bit on a cold or something. And he, and it was like night and day better. And he's like, I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> that's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it depends. So on the it horse. just depends. What about, it depends on the horse. What about bit maker though? What, what particular bit maker do you like or lean, lean towards more than others? You know, I feel like Clapper will always be my favorite. <laughs> There's a pretty consistent trend with that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who used yeah. it says Billy Clapper for he, a good reason. And, and my dad, my dad has been friends with him for a very long time. And, you know, his bits, they just have the best feel. And it doesn't matter, you know, what size it is. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's, a, if it's a low port or if it's, you know... A high port. They just have got such a good feel to them. Yeah. How old is Billy now? Do you know? Old. <laughs> 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 I got gotcha. you. But I, I think he's. I think he still makes. I think he still makes them. But I do know, like, you know, when something comes up for sale, it's it's gone before you can even think about it. Right. One day, one day I will have. I don't have one yet, but one day. Yeah, you, it, 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 they do. They just feel good. Yeah, I don't know that I'm good enough to tell a difference, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm good enough to tell a difference. I, I'll stick with the Carrie Kellys until. Oh, and day. I do, and I love Carrie Kellys. Yeah. In fact, uh, Larry Reader, when when Carrie Kelly first started making bridles, and this was obviously a while ago. Um, Larry Reader bought bought one for Shannon Hall and one for my husband, and uh, we still have we still have that bit, and it's still one of our favorites. 
Like it's it's a universal bit for us. It comes showtime. Yeah. Yeah, they're good bits, and it's not just a, a crazy amount of money, you know, and uh, quality's there for sure. Absolutely, he does. He does a great job. Yeah, he does. It, it, you know what? And they they feel great. He does. He does a great job with with it, and I'm and I'm sure that he'll he'll be one to fill, you know, Billy's Billy's steps, you know, in the, in the future. Yeah, like I think that people will will, you know, want 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 his uh his products um yeah i agree with you 100 percent. what um i'm curious I, I ask most everybody that comes on the show what is your favorite western if i don't say lonesome dove my husband <laughs> would shoot me. he would absolutely shoot me and when i got married he's like what do you mean you haven't seen lonesome dove and i'm like I don't know. Like I don't. I don't. I guess I haven't been able to sit down for nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have that. Um, I, I, that's my same answer. How do you not? How do you not say lonesome dove? Yeah, I. I. I he would kill me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, there's a, there's a so my next question kind of goes in line with that. So there's a number of one-liners in that movie, and and with you growing up in the the cowboy world. Can you give me the best one-liner you've ever heard or that you may say? Uh, from from Lonesome Dove or just uh, in general? I mean, hell, it may come from Lonesome Dove, but no, it, it just in general. <sighs> oh, there's a lot. Especially when you're around my husband. Uh, <laughs> his, his favorite line, you know, from there is, uh, I won't, won't tolerate rude behavior. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. You know, and as I get older, he, <laughs> uh, his, his, another one is, you know, like speaking of, you know, people around you and, you know, you start getting older and, you know, when you're young, you want lots of friends and like the older you get, you, you realize it's more about quality than quantity. And his, his favorite saying is, you know, I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. <laughs> and I saw it on Facebook. I like that. I'm writing that one down. Yeah, he says a lot, and it's and it's exactly true. Like I would rather have four great friends than than a hundred, you know, acquaintances. That's and good. <laughs> he's like, I made that up. I'm like, no, you didn't. He's like, I swear. <laughs> and then and then something popped up on Facebook the other day, and he's like, Can you believe they took that? And I'm like. <laughs> You did not make that up. He's like, I swear I made that up. That is my saying. That's like, great. Yeah, okay. the, the Google gods, the Google iPhone gods heard him say it somewhere. and uh, Yeah, well, he says it a lot, out. and it's true. You know, and it's it's just the truth. I would rather have four, four quarters than 100 pennies. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, cool. Well, um, I got one last question for you, Karen. I ask everybody that, that comes on the show this question. What is your definition of a cowboy? My definition of a cowboy, uh, you know, is somebody that, you know, respects, you know, and lives and, and breathes, you know, the, the cattle and the, and the horses, you know, it, and not, not just, not just horses, but like, they don't treat them like golf clubs. Mm. My definition of a cowboy is, you know, they respect and, and they take care of the land and they take care of the animals. You know, it's not, it's not a nine to five job, you know, you know, when they're, when they're calving or, you know, where they're fulling out at, you know, two o'clock in the morning and, and that's all you think about and, and make sure that they're well taken care of and fed and, and, just the whole quality of their life because you know they they affect us like i mean it's not just a business for us it's it's a way of life yeah i don't i don't like it when when people treat them like golf clubs you know <laughs> when they just use them up and throw them away yeah great answer well um i lied to you that wasn't the last question where can uh where can people find you, Kara? Are you doing any clinics now, or you know, if customers wanted to reach out to you, well, how would they? How would they do that? We are um, in in Northeast Oklahoma, 
like, I mean, the very northeast Oklahoma. Our driveway is the Arkansas-Oklahoma <laughs> state line, and then and then a mile north is, is the Missouri state line. So that's that's where we are. Um, but yeah, it's, I have started to do clinics, and um, I was fortunate enough. Speaking of women. Uh, and cowgirls and stuff like that. I was fortunate enough to go and give some demonstrations at the Art of the Cowgirl that uh, Tammy Pate and Mesa Pate put on in in Arizona this year. And it's just about the Western um, way of life and, and cowgirls and women. And, and she had the, the, this year was the first, I think they had an all women ranch rodeo they had the first year for the world's greatest horsewoman where, where they went and competed in, in, I think the, the winner, uh, Kelsey Thomas, she get to go, she got to go and compete at the world's greatest horseman. Yeah. I saw and, that. Uh, that was awesome. I'm going to tell you in, in those girls, like, uh, <laughs> I had a friend and like, I didn't get to go and see the preliminaries, but he, he was like, those girls are ranked like they, yeah. they were they were they wrote like they yeah. were awesome i'm like yeah funny thing girls yeah. can wrote too yeah huh? i've seen kelsey's show <laughs> and she fun. is handy yeah oh i um uh, it, it it was it was awesome to see like i mean these little 90 100 pound girls i mean like like those pony shells were swinging and those calves were huge yeah, and they were just right. it was awesome when was so it, or got, when is it is that an annual that. go ahead i'm sorry yep yeah, no, sorry. They are doing it every year. That was the second year, and it had grown uh, from the first year to the second year. It had grown huge. I mean, people were everywhere, and and I would suggest anybody to go see that. They had um, clinicians, you know, from the mountain shooting to cutting to reining to English to stock dogs. They had, you know, booths. Um, they had, like, um, some like cooking, like, um, Chuck like wagon cook like, Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, they're going to do that. Yes. Every year. And I, and I think they have, you know, an all woman's ranch, ranch gambling sale and, and they're going to do that every year. Um, where is it at I'm again? Where sure. did you say? It was in, uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Um, Yes, and I can't remember the name of the arena, but it was an old Mexican, like, bullfighting arena. It was just very, very cool, very, very cool thing to do. And then I was supposed to go and do a clinic in Washington right when COVID-19 hit. And my husband's like, you're not going? I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> and he's like, you have to fly into Seattle. Like, that, like, there's 30 people died right there. Like, you're not going. I'm like... Okay, guess I'm not going. <laughs> so yeah. we're rescheduling. I think everybody is just kind of in limbo right now. Yeah, I know. But as, as far as clinics and shows, I think when it opens up, I think people are going to be so excited to go. Right. That, you know, cutting is going to bounce back and, and be huge. <laughs> yep. I believe you're right. And uh, I definitely look forward to seeing you guys. Um, start showing again you know when that time comes hopefully sooner than later mm -hmm.